Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Tuesday's edition of the DC Universe Daily. Today, my friends, is about straight talk. I'm going to throw some facts your way. I'm going to educate you about DC so you understand what exactly is going on. Now, whether you accept what I'm saying or not is entirely up to you. This is not a dictatorship, but I've been a DC fan for those who are new to this channel. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and like and share. It all helps. But for kind of the people, for the new people around, let me make it clear. I'm a huge DC fan and um, because of Superman the movie and Smallville, that's what got me into this crazy universe. But I'm not a shiller. I'm not going to keep on saying best movie ever. Oh, please point your butt cheek at me, James Gunn, so I can kiss it on Twitter. No. Today is about straight talk, everyone. So let's get down to it. The people who produced Black Adam, Shazam Fury of the Gods, The Flash Movie, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom have all been fired. The people who have been fired recruited James Gunn to write and direct some projects and recruited Peter Safran to produce several DC movies. In fact, he's producing most of, if not all of, next year's DC movies. Now, James Gunn and Peter Safran are going to, or are, the uh, co-chairs of DC Studios. Do you see what's going on here? Do you understand why the title of this today's DC Universe Daily is Nothing Has Changed? Because nothing has changed. The people who are going to be running DC in the future were recruited by the people who were fired. And why is James Gunn and Peter Saffron the co-chairs of DC Studios? Because they were already there and they were easy, lazy and safe hands to give it to because nobody else wanted the damn job. Because if you're going to put your name on something, everyone, you want it to be about your decisions. Not some fat cat sitting in an office who thinks their decisions, or let's, let's call it as it is, his decisions are going to make the most money. Because that's what it is. This is what it's all about for David Zaslav. He's come in to a disaster zone, a war zone. And it's in bankruptcy. It's in freefall financially, like the whole of Hollywood is now from their dumb, creatively bankrupt decision making and their aggressive, progressive stances. So he's come in and he's gone, oh, how, how do we fix DC? I know. We we'll just do what the other company are doing because they're making loads of money. By the way, they're not making loads of money anymore either. Check the box office. Tell me I'm wrong because I'm not. They're still making more money. They're still making more money than DC, right? But that's, the, I mean, anyone makes more money than DC and WB. Anyway, WB are the dumbest company in Hollywood. And let's see if that's changed after David, uh, since David Zaslav's come. I'm not sure that it actually has. So there we are, everyone. Nothing has changed. But some of you may not agree with me. Now, I'm not saying that James Gunn and Peter Saffron can't do something really, really successful with DC. Who knows? Maybe we'll be surprised. But here's the thing. Why is everyone so hyped? I know why. Because James Gunn keeps on taking famous comic book covers and posting them on Twitter and saying, making plans. Wow! Wow! You're falling for that, right? You're falling for that one, right? Yeah? But nothing's changed. As I said to you the other day, this is just the DC Extended Universe rebranded into DC Universe. And people are saying, yeah, well, it's not the DC Extended Universe anymore because it's going to be shared. Well, let me let you into a little secret, which is not really a secret. Zack Snyder's DC Extended Universe was a connected universe. Man of Steel continued straight from BVS. BVS literally continued straight into straight into uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. And Jesus Christ, even though David Ayer's Suicide Squad isn't David Ayer's Suicide Squad, literally 
That Suicide Squad movie continues straight after BVS. That was meant to be the Touchstone movie. But obviously the Snyder Cut really is the continuation. So there was already a connected great universe until the old leadership that have now been fired decided Zack Snyder wasn't the right person because they started off with not making Marvel money. Because Marvel didn't start off with making Marvel money. Iron Man did well. Iron Man 2 did okay, bad movie, but it did okay. Then all the other solo movies didn't do so well. It was only till the first Avengers where they really took off. And I know Justice League didn't take off, but Justice League didn't take off because they decided to dump Zack Snyder and rebrand the man's movie with Justice League. Would not Zack Snyder's Justice League have taken off as much as Joss Whedon's The First Avengers movie if it was left untouched? Think about that. Let's think about that for a minute. Yeah, today's about facts, everyone. Today's about facts. Tell me honestly, if Zack Snyder's Justice League, let's say it wasn't a four-hour movie. You can't release a four-hour movie in theatres. I understand that. Let's say it was two hours, 50 minutes, maybe even three hours. We've had, three, we've had plenty of three-hour movies. The Avengers Endgame is a three-hour movie and it's one of the most successful movies of all time. You tell me if that wouldn't have lifted the DCEU onto the level Zack Snyder always meant to lift it on. Tell me it wouldn't have had the same effect as the first Avengers. I mean, we'll never know, but surely it would have made more money than Justice League. I think we can all concede that. So, all the people who are saying, Oh my God, the Flash movie is going to be amazing. Produced by people who have been fired. People who have been fired have basically brought James Gunn and Peter Saffron into DC in the first place. James Gunn and Peter Saffron were already at DC when it was failing. What do you think about that Peter Saffron was producing? DC movies that have had mid-returns. Think about that for a minute. But there's more news, everyone. This should get you excited. The Flash movie is moving up its release by a week. This means it will be released two weeks prior to Indiana Jones 5. Because they're clearly fucking scared of that movie. But apparently, they're not scared of Pixar anymore because they're going up against Pixar. Now, Pixar may not be as popular as it used to be. But let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question. If you're a parent and it's school holidays, it's apparently going to be on Father's Day, right? So just imagine this, where are you taking your kids to see the Flash movie or a nice cuddly Pixar movie? Come on everyone, let's call this out straight. It's clear that Warner Brothers is still the dumbest company in Hollywood. Because first of all, the Flash movie without any competition may actually fail. Let's be clear, Black Adam without any competition lost Warner Brothers a hundred million dollars and that is official. Whatever you think about the movie, there you go. Produced by people who were fired, people who were fired brought in the people who are now running DC Studios. As I say, nothing has actually changed and we spoke about Black Adam yesterday, we did a little bit of a spoiler review, finally. We got there in the end, maybe I will do that with DC movies in the future. Which is basically what we'll do is we'll just kind of wait for the spoiler review until it's come on to digital. Um, rather than spoiling it for everyone. We'll do the non-spoiler reviews early because they're easy to do and nobody gets spoiled. Because I don't like spoiling people. I think it's a shame that because they knew Black Adam was going to fail, that they basically spoiled the fact that Superman was in the post credit scene. What a shame about that. But what about Superman? When that film, when we've all found out Superman was in that clip and Henry Cavill couldn't stop speaking, he was very excited. There's going to be a Superman film in development. Now we know there's actually no Superman film in development. Guess what, everyone? Because the geniuses who are there, the geniuses uh, who are now running DC um, and who were brought on by the people who were actually fired decided to use Henry Cavill's Superman's popularity to amp up the box office for Black Adam. And guess what happened? That initiative 
failed and failed miserably. What does that say, everyone, about Henry Cavill's Superman? But more exciting news, Bad Girl, the movie, the movie that was shelved by David Zaslav himself, well, the directors have got a, a meeting coming soon with James Gunn. How really, really, are you excited? Are you excited? I'm not. That's not exciting to me, but are you excited? Wow. It looks like we're trying to unruffle some progressive feathers. But it doesn't help, you know, make DC great when you're still trying to put the pin into other hand grenades, you know, that you, you launched. I mean, let's be honest about that. Why did you fucking shelve Batgirl in the first place? Even if it's the worst movie ever. These other movies are not going to be great anyway. What's one more bad movie when you've got a bunch of bad movies, right? <laughs> so, what we've got next year is a disaster zone. But James Gunn tells us he and Peter are proud to be shepherding these movies. Well, Peter produced most of these movies. So, of course, he's going to say he's proud of shepherding them. So what's actually going on here? So really, DC Universe is not a brand new franchise. It's just the same old thing. What exactly is going to change here? As I say, I'm not going to say that what James Gunn and Peter Suffern are going to do is bad. There's a DC Studios now. You've got two people who may know what they're doing. I don't know. I know James Gunn's a really good writer-director. But you're running DC Studios now. So there's a there's a difference. I'm not seeing any difference here. Let's see. Let's let's see if I'm wrong. If DC Universe is a brand new rebooted franchise, I will be happy and excited and I will I will own my shit and say I was wrong. Because I'm always very, very comfortable about being wrong. But ultimately everyone. There's no upcoming Henry Cavill movie. That's not even happening at this moment. They used him and they used us to amp up a movie they fucked over and cut most of it to pieces. Like they did with Suicide Squad. Like they did with Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like they did with Batman vs. Sigman. Like they've done with so many projects by now. And that isn't, that's just the beginning of their creative bankruptcy. So these people who were fired literally recruited the people who are running DC now. And they are facts, everyone. Now, whatever you choose to do with those facts is entirely up to you. But I'm just telling you the way that it is. And the way that it is is that the people who are running DC into the ground brought in the people who are now going to be leading DC into this bright, exciting future or at least we hope it's an exciting future or will it be more creative bankruptcy i don't know but i'm not going to sit here with my dc flag and say oh james god yeah yeah god is in the galaxy yeah yeah now my reaction initially was very very excitable as it was for every single dc fan finally dc studios finally two people running it who seem to know what they're doing you hope. But I have seen a lot of red flags since that moment. The Henry Cavill thing. Because he, he doesn't seem to be back. And he doesn't seem to be talking anymore, by the way. And by the way, he was talking at the time on his Instagram. And he was. it's interesting as well. Because at the time of him hyping up his Superman return, guess what they were marketing? Yes, Enola Holmes too. Yeah, so obviously him hyping up Superman would have helped that project. Oh yes, everyone, this is how it works out. No one in this industry is your fucking friend. All they're interested in is making money and making their projects successful, whether they're actors, producers or directors. You may think that these people are your friends, but they don't give a shit about you. To these people, it's all about money, and business and never forget that never forget that these people are not your friends ultimately all I want is a great DC franchise I want to be able to sit in a DC movie 
with my sisters who know jack shit about DC, where I can enjoy it, who know, you know, someone who knows everything about DC, and those two people can sit there who know nothing about DC and also enjoy the movie. And whether that's a streaming show or animated show, same thing. Same rules should apply. That's what I want. I want a great DC universe. And I hope James and Peter give it to us. But by these facts that I've delivered to you, where you lot go to me, oh, the Blue Beetle movie's got a great poster. Guess what else had a great poster? Superman for the Quest for Peace. And we all know what a bag of shit that film ended up being. Posters mean nothing. Hype means nothing. Now, if I go to see that film and I love it, I'll say, wow, thank you. Thank you, Ma Manuel. Right? Is it two directors? Don't know. But anyway, I'll say thank you, director or directors of Blue Beetle. Great movie. But don't forget Blue Beetle and next year's other movies were produced by people who have been fired. People that cost Warner Brothers a hundred million dollars in losses because of the Black Adam movie being so mid, poorly edited and cutting so much out of this movie, the movie didn't make literal sense anymore. And by the end of the movie, we can all tell that this film had the shit cut out of it. We all know that everyone. So these are the facts everyone. Does this mean I'm not a DC fan anymore? Of course it doesn't. I love DC. I love a lot of DC movies. And I respect James Gunn as a writer, director. That's not the point. I'm sitting here seeing a lot of red flags. And until I can be given any evidence that it's not just the same people all over again making the same mistakes, then I have to speak truths and educate you people. But here's a funnier a piece of evidence to prove to you that Warner Brothers is still the dumbest studio in Hollywood. So they're rebranding HBO Max. So they're going to um, basically merge Discovery Plus with HBO Max. But get this, you probably heard the news already. They're taking the HBO out of it. Yeah, they're taking the HBO out of it. These are three of the, three of the most respected letters in the entertainment industry, HBO, and they're just gonna call it Max, right? So this is how dumb these people are, taking HBO out of it, out of the branding, but even worse, the same mistake they made originally with HBO Max is not putting Warner Brothers in the branding. So people will still not know that Warner Brothers have anything to do with this new Max streaming service. If these people had brains, they would be dangerous. So there we are. So I have absolutely no trust in these people to give us a great DC Studios and a great DC Universe. But you know what, my friends? I've been wrong plenty of times in my life. I could be wrong again. And I hope I'm wrong this time. This has been Movies TV Mad. I met your host with the most just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir.